Hello and welcome to this GCSE explainer on sand dunes. You can see here uh, some pioneer plants and some sand dunes near Blythe in, in the northeast of England. A really wide, expansive beach. Uh, might be able to make out a, a groin there. The port of Blythe's back here. And you see these, these rolling hills here with various bits of vegetation and sand on. That's the, that's the starting point of a sand dune, an embryo dune. So we're going to be looking at sand dunes as an example of coastal deposition landforms. And you'll need to know some key words. So a sanacea is another name for a sand dune ecosystem. Ecosystems you might have covered in biology. That's a collection of plants and animals that adapt and adjust to abiotic. That's non-living and biotic factors. That's living factors in a particular location. So your abiotic factors, your non-living things are things like sunlight, wind speed and direction, inundation from the sea, uh, soil acidity or pH parts of hydrogen, infiltration rates, rainfall slope aspect, the fertility of the soil and how much uh, humus content there is in it. Your biotic factors are things like competition with other species, interactions with other plants and, and animals. You may get some human factors as well because we have a major impact on ecosystems. Succession is the change in a species in an ecosystem over time. Okay, so how does a how does a, an ecosystem change over time? So if you think about, uh, I don't know, when a glacier retreats from a from an area, it leaves an exposed rock surface. Uh, the first plants in there will be will be small lichens and uh, and so on, and they would they would colonise the area, mosses and so on, and they would create a small soil, and then that thin soil would develop over time and allow more complex plants to inhabit. Zonation is the change in species over space, which we'll have a look at. And then a xerophyte um, is a plant adapted to living in dry, arid habitats like sand dunes. And I know um, it might be hard for that to understand that, but um, even in even in the UK, a lot of the plants on sand dunes have to adjust to having not very much uh, water because sand allows water to soak through it very, very quickly. We have lots of sand dunes all over the UK. The um, closest ones to me are up up near Blythe but we've got them all around the coastline of the UK depending on the on the coastal environment and they're created in the following in the following where we get obstacles like driftwood and so on that get to get dropped onto a beach and when the wind blows sand grains get get blown up there uh, and accumulate around the obstacle that get trapped on there so there goes all the sand grains and that creates what we call an, an embryo tune um, where colonising pioneer plants like marron grass and so on grow on that dune and stabilise it with their roots to trap more sand. And as the plants die, they add something called organic matter to the soil and that improves it for other plants to, to live. Okay, um, So that's how it, they develop over time. Um, and there's a little bit of a summary of that there on there. Well, I've just... Uh, what I've just talked about. The only bit I missed out, really, I guess, um, was that eventually the climatic climax vegetation would be reached, which for the UK we would tend to get forests or, or scrub forests at the back of at the back of sand dunes. So that's that diagram again, but this is how it looks with zonation. So as you go back from the sea, the sand dune would have increased soil depth. Okay, we'd have four dunes at the front and mobile dunes, the ones which accumulate around obstacles. We have our embryo dunes at the start, then your four dunes. A little bit further back you might get dune slacks. Uh, that's areas where the dunes below sea level and we get ponds and things formed. Okay, You might get creeping willow and common sallow and things like that. And then at the back, that's your climax vegetation like brambles, heather, pines, oaks. And then all these features change as you go back. So the distance from the sea increases. The pH would, would decline as you get less, less calcium carbonate from shells in the soil. And the soil would increase in colour from yellow through to, to brown as more organic matter is added. You'd have more hummus in the soil and less calcium carbonate. So those are the major changes on your on the sand dune system. Um, and you get much more complex plants at the back because the front... The front of the dune absorbs a lot of the tough conditions, like sometimes the sea will go over the plants and they'll have to cope with salinity. Wind will blow up onto the plants and, and cause uh, problems with burial by, by sand. Um, the wind can snap the stems of the plants and damage them as well. Um, they've got lots of tough conditions to cope with. Um, it's sandier, so there's less water in the soil and so on. So one of the plants that can cope with um, 
those conditions is marram grass okay uh, and it's got lots of adaptations so uh, the structure of the leaves uh, the inner side has stomata sunk in protective pits that limits water loss they might be, have little tiny hairs in there that help to the leaf to close and trap water they have a smooth outer edge and a thick outer edge which resists abrasion from wind blown sand the woody tissue is tough and strong for to cope with the wind and the stems can grow quickly and elongate so that it can cope with coverage by sand and the root systems tap deep into water um, so that they they can cope with that aridity um, so if you ever you know if you've ever tried to pull that type of grass out of the out of a sand dune you would find that very difficult indeed so in terms of tasks uh, you can define the key terms you can see what conditions occur on a sand dune that make it difficult for it to survive watch this brilliant video from time to geography if you haven't uh, if you haven't subscribed to their site it's absolutely fantastic get yourself on there uh, six questions based on their video and then there's some tasks around the, uh, the the information i've just given you why do we get pioneer plants at the front what conditions do they have to cope with what are the dune slack and so on explain how they're created using the flow chart and then how does marron grass cope okay we'll just finish with a little joke um, what do you call seagulls that live near the bay bagels <laughs>